This is an easy question, arithmetic progression. I'll classify this question as a 600 to 650 level GMAT problem solving question. How many three digit positive integers exist that when divided by seven, leave a remainder of five? So let's start. In any of these questions, the approach is very simple. First, we need to determine what the sequence is. What does that mean? Let's find out what the first term of the sequence is. What's the last term if we can compute with the information given? And if there is any pattern to the sequence, use that to finally arrive at the answer. We need to find the number of such numbers, number of such three-digit numbers that exist. What we'll do is we'll start with the first term of the sequence. The smallest three-digit number is 100. Let's see if we can spot any multiple of 7 close to 100. 98 is 14 times 7. So 98 is a two-digit number, which is a multiple of seven. We want a number that should leave a remainder of five when divided by seven. So add five to this, we're going to get 103, which ends up being a three-digit number. So 103 is the first three-digit number that will leave you a remainder of five when divided by seven. What's going to be the next number? 103 leaves you a remainder of five. So if I add one more to it, 104 will leave a remainder of six. 105 is actually divisible by seven. It's divisible by seven. We need the next number that when divided by seven will leave you a remainder of five. So add five more to this. So that's going to be equal to 110. So 103 is the first number. 110 is the next number. You probably guessed it right. The next number is going to be 117. So these numbers start from 103 and are in a progression where the common difference between any two consecutive term is the same, which is equal to seven. So you found out what the sequence is, the first term and the common difference. Well, let's go and see if we can deduce what the last term is. If you have determined that 97 is divisible by seven, then obviously 980 is also divisible by seven. We want a number that should leave a reminder of five and divided by seven and should be the largest such three digit number. Let's add four, seven more to it. 987 is divisible by seven. 994 is divisible by seven. 1001 is divisible by seven. So here we are crossing the three digit and stepping into the four digit limit. So now what do we have? We have a number that when divided by seven should leave a remainder of five and should be the largest such three digit number. Let's look at what happens if it is 994 plus five. 994 is divisible by seven. If I add a five to it, 999 is the largest three digit number that will leave you a remainder of five when divided by seven. So you found out the first term, we have found the common difference to be equal to seven and you found out the last term which is equal to 999. Quickly summarize this in a printed form. The first term of the sequence is 103. We went about it, finding out the largest two digit number that is divisible by seven and adding a five to it. Then we computed the last largest three digit number that is divisible by seven, starting with 980 being a number divisible by seven. Then we deduce that this is in an arithmetic progression where the first term is 103, last term is 999 and the common difference is seven. Now all that is left is to compute the number of terms. We're going to be using the formula to compute the last term of an arithmetic progression or the nth term of an AP. The last term or the nth term is the first term plus n minus one times a common difference. Let's plug in all the data that we have. The last term L equals 999. The first term A equals 103 plus n minus one times the common difference equals seven. Take this 103 to the left hand side, you'll get 896 equals n minus one times seven. Divide both sides of the equation by a seven. 896 divided by 7 will leave you with 128 as the quotient. This equals n minus 1. If n minus 1 equals 128, n is equal to 129. This bit of the calculation, let's summarize it in a printed form. We have plugged in the values. Last term is equal to 999. First term is 103. And the common difference equals 7. So one equation, one variable. Solving for n, we get n equals 129. Choice E is the correct answer to the question. Before you leave, do three things. One, sign up as a trial user for GMAT online course, Visa course GMAT online course at wzko.in slash core. Get started with statistics and average. Get momentum to your GMAT preparation. Pay and convert it into a paid user to get access to the remaining topics. Two other things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash visaco and turn on notification. Lastly, there is one other thing that you can do. You can join as a member of this channel, which is different from subscribing to this channel. There's a small monthly fee to pay to join as a member. You get some member only perks which are not available for all subscribers. Click on the join button. Even before you pay, you'll get a listing of the member only perks. Those member only perks will help give a boost to your GMAT preparation. Best wishes.